We're going to go over the process of how we calculate all the required lengths for our rafters here. So for this example, which you will actually build, the span of the house is 10 feet. The slope of the roof is a 512 and the overhang is four inches. So in this space right here, we're going to draw a quick sketch of what this would look like. So uh, if this is the bottom of the house and then this is the gable. So the span means from outside edge to outside edge of the house, it is 10 feet. Not very realistic, but this is just an example. So that means if you were to draw a line straight down from the middle of the roof, that means that the run is equal to half the span is five feet. The pitch of the roof is right here. That is a 512 pitch. And then this part right here that hangs over the edge of the house, that is four inches. That's where you have your soffit and your gutter and all that kind of stuff. So the run of the house here is five feet. Remember, that's half of the span. So we need to identify and calculate or draw each of the following information. The common raptor length, also known as CRL, per foot run in decimal feet. Well, what that means is if we were to draw a triangle based on this information here, the 512 pitch, it would run 12 inches. And then for every 12 inches of run, it would rise five inches. So we need to figure out what this hypotenuse is here. We could use the Pythagorean theorem and do five squared plus 12 squared, 25 plus 144 and get 169. Um, and then the square root of 169 is 13. Another thing is on job sites, they have a framing square. And on the framing square, you have common rafter length per foot of run. And so, um, Carpenters don't have to always have a calculator handy. If you go down the framing square until you see five inches, the first number you come across is a 13. And so that's, they've done the math for us. It's 13 inches. Um, if you want to put decimals, it's 13.0 because it is exactly 13 inches. It's one of the very few numbers that will be exactly in it, uh, to the nearest inch. So uh, what is the total rise of the roof in inches? Here we can draw a quick sketch. Um, so I'll have a 12 inch run and a five inch rise. And then I'll have another 12 inch and a five inch and then another. And I will do this five times because remember the uh, run of my house is five. So it's one, two, three, four, 12 inches and five, and then a fifth. 12 inches and five inches. So this means that my total width here is five feet. My total, so because 12 inches plus 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 12 is 60 inches, which is really five feet. And then it's five, 10, 15, 20, 25 inches. So the total rise is 25 inches. We can leave that number in inches. And then uh, the, so we're looking for the, um, common rafter length, the rise and the run. So the, I'm not looking for it per foot of run. Now I'm looking for the common rafter length. That is this whole length right here. Remember that's 13 inches for each one of these. And so if I were to do 13 inches, five of them, so 13 inches times five, we would get 65 inches. And then the rise is equal to 25 inches. The run is five feet. The triangle we would draw to represent that is five feet, 25 inches, 65 inches here. That really represents this triangle, this part of the house right here. So we've actually already drawn all the steps, the rise and the run right here. We'll just draw it out in this bigger space. One, two, three, four, five. 
total common uh, rafter length. Now it's in feet and inches. So 65 inches is equal to five feet, five inches. All right, so that is our total common rafter length. We're going to then draw the rafter lines one through five. The rafter lines one through five, the resource that we're gonna use to um, do that are these guidelines right here on your screen. Line one is the ridge beam cut. Line two is the mark for the common rafter length. Line three, we're gonna add additional length for overhang. Uh, then we're gonna mark 1.5 for the uh, from line two for the bird's mouth. And then line five, we're gonna subtract half the ridge beam length. So we're gonna actually show you on a board how to do this. I will quickly show you what, I, what this means. So we're gonna use the, uh, framing square to draw this first line at a certain angle right here. That's our initial line. And then we're gonna go down this 65 inches and draw, you know, make a mark at the same angle, draw another line. So this is line one, this is line two. Then we're gonna go an additional, uh, our overhang of four inches. This is line three. And then using the frame square, using the tongue of the frame square, you're going to measure up one and a half inches right here. And again, using the frame square, draw a very special angle there. This is line four. What we've done here, this is our bird's mouth. That's going to allow our uh, rafter to sit on top of our second top plate. And then we're going to come back over here, measure three quarters of an inch. and make our fifth and final line um, that backs off the rafter, um, off of the ridge beam by half the width. Uh, and then we're gonna actually cut here, and then we're gonna cut these two lines uh, and this line here. Those are the actual cuts you'll make when you actually cut your rafter.